makes Christian prayer special is the fact that it's about talking with God rather than desperately trying to reach out to him. That's what it is. But um, why should anybody bother? What's the point of praying? Well, first and foremost, because God wants to hear from us and help us with every aspect of our lives. He wants to put us under the spotlight and give us his undivided attention. We're the stars of the show as far as he's concerned. There's nothing he doesn't want to hear about. Nothing too big, nothing too small, nothing too trivial. Your family and friends. Your future. Your past. Your nasty habits and your good ones. Your social scene. And the great wide world, whatever. He's all ears, always. And something else happens when we're under his spotlight. As his light reaches into areas we couldn't see clearly before, we start to see things in a new way, his way. We see how he views us and how he views the world. And we begin to understand that bit more, his intentions and directions for our lives. In fact, through the Holy Spirit living in us, we begin to become more like him. When I pray, I get... God's view of me and I get my life seems to come back into focus, into perspective. Um, but also I think it's about, you know, saying, God, what do you want me to be? I'm looking not only for a change in the situation, but probably sometimes there has to be a change in me because perhaps I've been praying the wrong thing, but by me constantly bringing situations to God, I'm being changed as I see more of his will, I come more in line with where he's at as well. For me, a big part of prayer is just inviting God to make me more like Jesus. You know, when I decided to follow Jesus, I said, that's what the goal of my life is, I want to be like Jesus. And it's about inviting God to do that and to change me, maybe to change the direction of my life, but more to change my heart, to, to change me into the person he intended me to be, created me to be. And Jesus obviously thought prayer was pretty essential too. <laughs> Jesus often slipped away to be alone so he could pray. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Everyone who asks will receive. Everyone who searches will find. And everyone who knocks will have the door opened. Okay, so now you're totally bowled over by the exciting possibilities of prayer. Or maybe in the back of your mind, or even surging towards the front, there's a little voice saying, yeah, yeah, lovely theory, but half the time God seems a million miles away. And no matter how hard I shout, he's just not listening. Why do we need to pray when God knows all our needs? And how do we hear him anyway? Why does it seem so often that he's not answering? How does he answer? And why does prayer seem so totally, unbelievably difficult? Why? We have to recognise that prayer is a discipline as much as anything else, and that we have to be disciplined in it. And so that means that sometimes it does not come easy. You know, we have to actually make an effort to pray. God and I are in a relationship together, and uh, if that relationship is, is worth sticking at together, then it's worth sticking at talking to God. We need to pray because God wants us to be involved. It's as simple as that. He kind of needs us, he doesn't really need us, but he's chosen to need us. And he, through our prayers, he performs his will. That's a principle with God, that it's like we invite him, and once we've invited him, then he does the things which he knows we already need. But he, the thing with God is just all about relationship, isn't it? And he wants to be in that relationship, not just bulldozing our lives, but being invited. By praying and through prayer, we are involved in God, with God making the decisions, yes, but we're involved in the way in which he acts in the world. Prayer needs practice. If you want it to become a natural, everyday part of your life, you've got to get into training. Just like you can't become a top-class athlete overnight, neither can you become a top-class prayer without working at it. I'm sure some mornings an athlete will find it easy to get up and get stuck in, but most days it'll be a total grind, and even getting out of bed will be a struggle. But the thing is, the more he trains, the stronger he'll get, and the fitter he becomes.
and his skill becomes more and more second nature. It's like that with prayer. You've got to stick at it. It doesn't mean you always get what you want. Sometimes you do. And sometimes you don't. We were playing about the future of the band just recently in December, whether it's right that we should carry on or whether it's right that we should um, go on to other things. Um, we were only three people from a, what should be a five-piece band. Um, after, after feeling that at the end of the prayer time that it was right to carry on, within a couple of days, the two extra people that were needed both arrived. Bookings came in and we were able to carry on. How do you feel? Uh, very excited and happy. And uh, privileged that we were Christians and we we had a very strong person, namely Jesus, that we could talk to. Um, sometimes you can pray for ages and ages and you think there's just been no change, and then all of a sudden it will just happen. When we ask God for something, there are three possible answers we can get: yes, no, and wait. No can be frustrating, and waiting can sometimes seem to go on forever. But the crucial thing to remember is that God always wants the best for us. If your children asked for bread, which of you would give them a stone? Or if your children asked for a fish, would you give them a snake? Even though you are bad, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? I've had a very good answer to prayer one time when I actually didn't want an answer to prayer. It was um, before I was in this band. I was playing in another band, which I shouldn't have been playing in, really, for, for several reasons. Uh, it wasn't a Christian band. And uh, I was told by a friend of mine that God wanted me to leave that band. And basically, I didn't want to hear that. And, uh, and it, it was on a youth camp I was on at the time. And so I got a couple of the leaders to pray with me during that week. And uh, by the end of it, I basically said, look, if God comes up with a better a better offer for me, gives me a better, um, if God gives me a Christian band that I can play in instead, then I'll leave the band I'm in, thinking to myself, ah, oh, he's not going to do that. And the week after, Nick phoned me up, saying they needed a bass player, so I thought, uh, <laughs> that was uh, quite a good answer to prayer for me, when I didn't actually want it. Yeah, I think the classic one, of course, is when you're praying, God saying, oh, please let me go out with this person, <laughs> and you just totally besotted with him. And and then you find out maybe six months along the line. Um, in fact, there's one girl that I was just so keen on for ages, like five years. She's getting married in the summer to another guy. And I'm so glad, you know, because I was wrong for her and she was wrong for me. So, so it's, it's such a blessing. You, you really hate God at the time, but afterwards you think, oh, thank you. <laughs> Save my life. <laughs> Why pray? Because God loves to use our prayer as part of his plan to change the world and to change us. So get yourself into God's spotlight and begin to see the world and yourself from his perspective. And talk to him about it. There's nothing to be afraid of. As we stand in the full brilliance of God's light, he isn't cringing in despair. He loves what he sees and he longs to work with us. So get praying.